Horror Fanatic here. I wouldn't go so far as to call myself an expert on the slasher genre, or even a hardcore fan for that matter. But I do like to think that I've seen enough slashers and I've read enough books on the subject to know the difference between what's a slasher and what's not a slasher. Slashers have a few things almost universally in common. First and foremost, you need your slasher, your killer to go out and do your hunting, your murdering, and they're typically hooded or masked. Then, you need some kind of inciting incident, a catalyst for the events of the film. This is things from a murder being covered up, to emotional trauma as a child, or maybe the guy just likes killing and murdering. The preamble. We have Don't Go Into the Woods, The Scourge of God, and Wild Teen Party. And a couple of these are real stretches for tropes in this film. As none of the characters are actually teens, the party isn't that wild, and normally slashers don't really have adult characters. It focuses on a teen cast, with the adult characters taking a back seat. And in fact, I don't think I can think of a single slasher off the top of my head that has an exclusively adult cast. Regardless, here's the cast breakdown. We have Kim, the final girl, Matt, her boyfriend, their friend Dash, who's an asshole victim, his wife Amber, who gets too dumb to live, their friend Baker, and that that's just it, Baker is about as interesting as toast, Lily, who's also a final girl, who is Baker's girlfriend, and Eve, who is not a final girl. Yeah, that's that's kind of the best I could do for this cast. They're, they're very bland. And the final girls tropes application could be argued against, but I can make a solid enough argument for it that I'm gonna let them have them. I really enjoyed the film's opening, with Kim being stranded in her car on the side of the road, waiting for her boyfriend Matt to return with gas presumably out of cell phone range. Were this a slasher, the two of them wouldn't make it out of this stranded on the side of the road scene. The two of them are going to a party at a friend's cabin to meet up with old friends. They create a tense atmosphere when they arrive due to their recent breakup, and what follows is some of the most drawn out character development I have ever seen. Like, I'm all for developing Doom characters and character development in general, but it goes on at a very slow pace for 40 minutes. Nearly a third of the total runtime of this film is just them lounging about. But, as slow as this part goes, I really do enjoy it for the music. It sets the perfect somber tone for the rest of the film, and it really is what ties this scene here together, and it's the only part of the first 40 minutes of this film that I genuinely enjoyed. Eventually, Kim challenges Matt to go play the game. He refuses, but Dash steps up and does it in his place, followed by Eve, and after Eve does it, there's a loud bang and a house rattle. She emerges, and then Matt does take his turn. That's this film's inciting incident. That's it. A game that all of the girls in this film, except for Lily, have stated they've played, is the murderous offset for the rest of the film. Developing doomed characters. Film wasn't doing a lot. This is where the film actually does start to pick up a little bit. But not as much as you would think. Matt wakes up in the night hearing a sound outside, and he goes to investigate. He sees someone he recognizes, and then we cut to Lily, busting into the cabin, coated in blood, and freaking out, claiming Eve killed Matt. So, naturally intrigued, the whole group goes to look, except for, uh, except for Lily. She wants a GTFO. Baker's the last to arrive, and indeed, Matt is dead very dead. But he doesn't stay that way. Nope. He can magically stitch himself up together and become a giant douche. 
That's really what this zombie does. Be a dick. He just insults them and reveals secrets. Like Baker's nailing Dash's wife, Amber. This results in Kim shoving a shovel through his face, killing him. Killing him. And then she goes and chases down Lily for killing Matt and being a necro... I really don't understand this point in the movie. I Does she, do you think that Lily's a necromancer? Has some sort of black witch powers? I could understand if he was just dead in the woods, just a corpse in the woods that, oh, maybe, maybe the blood-covered girl did, in fact, kill him. But not when he sits up and he starts being a dick. Kim tries to leave, but notices all three cars are dead, stranding them at the cabin. Dash and Baker then notice that Matt is still pulling himself back together and decide that cremation is the best way to go. Their group discussion turns darker after that with who or who may not be, like Matt, dead, knitted back together. This doesn't work well since Lily told them who did it, and also I don't find Matt that frightening. He's like a, dead a deadite, but not scary. That night, while Bruce and Kim are bonding while making weapons, Dash learns that Lily was telling the truth about Eve. My car hates me, everyone's a suspect, and the reveal. Slashers come in two distinct varieties. Your, your known, which is Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, and your unknown. This is, this is your Scream series with your masked killer who's a psychotic human being. They set up an unknown slasher to only have the reveal within 30 minutes. So, now we as the audience know who the killer is while the characters still do not. Except for Lily. Lily knows. Evie turns to the group claiming that Dash attacked her and was like, Matt, Kim, and Baker go to investigate, and sure enough, Matt's dead. So they, wait for, they tie him up and wait for him to regenerate to question him. It's a really pointless interrogation scene. Just, just bad. They learn nothing, and the things he does say muddles up everything. He mentions an apocalypse and other things. He claims that the game Dead Mary did it, which still makes very little sense why this time it worked and she was summoned when all the other times it didn't. Anyway, they leave him tied up and the group decides to split up. Amber is to remain in the house watching Lily while the rest, Kim, Eve, and Baker, try to go to through the woods to get help. Immediately, their plans go sideways. Amber knocks out Lily with a shovel as Lily tries to escape, and then here's Dash tied up in the shed. She is smart enough, though, to quickly deduce that he is dead-eye him and not real him, but ends up cremating herself with him on purpose because of codependency. It just really makes her weak character weaker, and I don't understand the reasoning behind it. Eve attacks Baker in the woods, and then it cuts to Baker escaping back to the house to be locked out by Lily. What follows is, in my opinion, the best scene in the whole film. Kim then arrives and kills Baker with a shovel to the gut because he might or might not be an undead? Kim then stalemates with Lily until the morning when Eve arrives from the woods, completely regenerated, to only be, after a short standoff, be cremated. Just ends. The Aftermath. We have a total body count of five. Now, before we get into this, it was one lone killer stalking a group of people nonsense. I need to highlight some issues I have. First, what's with the dead eye possession? Is dead Mary possessing them? 
The only ones we see possessed are the ones that played the game. If so, why didn't this game work when they were kids? They stated they played it as kids, and this is a common kids game. Second, there's no real inciting incident. They just play a common kids game. They've all played this game before. I heard that in the original draft, that playing the game would have accidentally awoken the spirit of a witch who was drowned in the lake. The witch would then rise from the lake bed and stalk and kill them. That sounds fucking awesome. Where's that movie? Last, people. There are none. Not at the gas station, and later on, Baker mentions that no one's around the lake. There's no skiers, no boaters. Is this going on everywhere? If this is an everywhere thing, this is definitely a more of an evil dead or zombie apocalypse film, not a slasher. Final thoughts. I don't feel Dead Mary is a slasher. That said, slasher is such a loosely defined genre that I can't see how others could claim that it is. But it's not even a good horror movie in my opinion. It's mood gets too muddled with everything they throw in, and there's no real violence, everything's cut away, which works very well in most horror films, but not in a slasher. So, until next time, remember, Wikipedia lies.